The SpaceX rocket that blasted into space almost seven years ago is now on track to hit the moon. What SpaceX launch was this? When will the rocket crash into the moon? And what does this mean for orbiting moon missions? Let's discuss them one by one. SpaceX launched its first deep space mission in February 2015 with a Falcon 9 version 1.1 rocket. The mission carried the freeze-sized Deep Space Climate Observatory, or DISCOVER satellite, which is a National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration's space weather, space climate, and Earth observation satellite. The spacecraft is currently in a looping halo orbit around the Sun-Earth Lagrange Point L1, in a six-month period. It was designed to orbit between Earth and the Sun, observing and providing advanced warning of particles and magnetic fields emitted by the Sun which can affect power grids, communications systems, and satellites close to Earth. From its post at the first Lagrange point, approximately 1 million miles from Earth, DISCOVER will also observe our planet and provide measurements of the radiation reflected and emitted by Earth, changes in ozone, aerosols, dust and volcanic ash, cloud height, vegetation cover and climate. Moreover, the spacecraft has a continuous view of the Sun and the sunlit side of the Earth from its location, allowing it to provide images for scientific applications. Because the spacecraft was sent so far out, the second stage propelling the satellite didn't have the fuel to return to Earth's atmosphere and burn up. That means, after the satellite separated, the second stage was left tumbling around the gravity of the Earth and Moon. It also lacked the energy to escape the gravity of the Earth-Moon system, so it has been following a somewhat chaotic orbit since February 2015. And now, according to sky observers, the spent second stage's orbit is on course to intersect with the Moon. Earlier this month, Bill Gray, who writes the widely used Project Pluto software to track near-Earth objects, asteroids, and comets, put out a call for amateur and professional astronomers to make additional observations of the rocket. With this new data, Gray believes the Falcon 9's upper stage will likely collide with the far side of the Moon, near the equator, although it is difficult to precisely predict the effect of sunlight pushing on the rocket and slightly altering its orbit. Falcon 9's second stage is powered by a single Merlin vacuum engine using cryogenic liquid oxygen and rocket-grade kerosene as propellants. It has a dry mass of 3,900 kg, and its propellant tank walls and domes are made from aluminum-lithium alloy. It is expected to hit the moon at a speed of around 2.58 km per second. The impact is expected to occur at 7.25 a.m. Eastern Time on March 4, at latitude 4.93 degrees, and east longitude 233.20 degrees. Many missions' spent stages have been used to impact the Moon in the past. Most notably, during the Apollo era, NASA would impact both the Saturn V third stage and Lunar Module's ascent stage into the surface, then seismometers would record the moonquakes that would occur. Moreover, the Lunar Crater Observation and Sensing Satellite, launched in 2009, struck the Moon in two locations. One was the satellite itself and the other was a rocket stage. Both hit the Moon's Cabeus Crater on October 9 of that year. Both L-Cross and a companion satellite launched simultaneously, the Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter, were able to analyze the material moved by the impact. But the Falcon 9 incident will be the first time a piece of space hardware unintentionally strikes the Moon. The exact time and location of the crash could be affected by several factors, such as the dead rocket's shape and sunlight. But according to Gray, he has a fairly complete mathematical model of what the Earth, Moon, Sun, and planets are doing, and how their gravity is affecting the object. He also has a rough idea of how much sunlight is pushing outward on the object, enabling him to make predictions with a good bit of confidence. While it sounds like a major incident for SpaceX, the impact could actually reveal some valuable scientific data. If researchers can determine the precise location of the impact, they'll be able to see a very fresh impact crater and probably learn something about the geology of that part of the Moon. Although scientists are most keen to understand the presence of ice at the lunar poles, being able to observe the subsurface material ejected by the Falcon 9 rocket strike could still provide some valuable data. Luckily, only a handful of missions orbit the Moon, so a collision between the Falcon 9 second stage and lunar orbiters is improbable. Since the crash is expected to happen on the far side of the Moon, we won't be able to observe it from Earth. But satellites orbiting the Moon, including NASA's Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter and India's Chandrayaan-2 spacecraft, may be able to collect data about the impact crater and study subsurface material ejected by the crash. According to NASA, they will not be in place to observe the impact, but they will attempt to locate the crater once overhead. More observations will be needed to fine-tune the time and location of impact, and hopefully, observations can be made from ground-based observatories. So, let's see if this unintentional lunar impact could reveal a little more about the moon's physical properties.
In the meantime, do not forget to subscribe to the channel for more space-related content. And as always, thanks for watching.